Hi, this is Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be doing some uh, abstract mic making and making this quick journal page called Creativity Takes Courage. And the reason I called it Creativity Takes Courage is because this style of artwork does go through a stage that I like to call the hot mess stage. You sort of look at it and go, what are you doing? This is ridiculous. But it all comes together in the end and you just need to be really courageous and think that I'm not sure where this is going but it's going to be okay in the end. So the first thing I'm doing and it's how I start a lot of pages where I'm not sure where I want to go is just put some gel medium over the background and put down some collage. So these are all sorts of different bits of collage. Um, some Tim Holtz tissue papers, some book pages, some gel prints that I had sitting around and um, all sorts of different things. Some um, uh, old journal pages that I'd scattered and printed and then torn up again. Some of the Dina Wakeley collage tissue papers. So anything you've got you can put down, you can overlay it. It doesn't matter if the colours don't work together because we're going to tie it all together in the end. The only thing I would suggest is when you're doing this is make sure that any collage you have doesn't have any water reactive media on it like um, the oxide inks or the oxide sprays or watercolours or the colour blast powders. If it does have any of those or the dilution stains is another one, sprays. If it does have any of those, just be aware that because you're putting gel medium back over the top again, it is going to spread that colour around. Now, that might not bother you at all, um, so just be aware that if you've got water reactive media, it will move when you're putting the gel medium over the top. So once I've finished and dried it off, now I'm going to go in with some watercolours. And this is my Jane Davenport Brights palette, which I really love for doing this technique because I love the bright colours. I just makes me happy using these, that beautiful yellow and that pink that's got a gorgeous purple on here too. Um, but any watercolours will work and all I'm doing is just colouring up the page and sort of bringing it all together. So you can see the background collage tissues but it's got these bright colours over the top. If you don't have watercolours you can certainly use really watered down acrylic paints, that will work just as well. Um, just make sure they're really translucent because you do want to see the collage in the background. Uh, you could use some inks that you've got or sprays as well, uh, it's up to you, but if most people have got some sort of water media in the background, in, in their um, palette. So now I'm going in with my brush and just making some marks, just with the end of the brush, sort of made those triangle, triangular marks. And this is where the fun happens in this page because now you can just get into mic making. So I'm putting down some circles and I'm making sure that I'm overlapping them onto different pages and different um, colour areas and collage papers. And that's one thing that really is important when you're doing this technique is because you want it to sort of stand out and um, look cohesive across your whole page. The second palette of watercolours I've got are all handmade watercolours from Designs by Rachel Beth who's um, available on Instagram. It's very hard to get your hands on them because they're so popular but if you ever do get a chance to get them they're amazing. The set that I use the most are these neon colours, surprise surprise, down the bottom which is called Hello Spring. But there's another set which has got the most magnificent um, copper colour in it which is called um, Birthday Party I think. Um, the, the copper is called Copper Candles, which is the one I'm putting down now, and it's like working with liquid metal. It's just amazing. It goes over the top of anything. Um, the handmade watercolours are almost, I would say, probably a little bit like um, gouache in the fact that they're just a little bit more opaque than regular watercolours. But you can see how you're building up your marks. Now, if you didn't have access to watercolours or you didn't have access to doing stuff like this, you could go straight onto the stage of just using your Posca paint pens over the top to create your marks and borders. Um, and just make any marks that you've got. This is you just doodling and being creative. So crosses, circles, lines, squiggly lines, anything you can think of will work. Um, and you can see it sort of all tying together. It started out quite separate and now it's sort of all coming together. One thing that I do tend to do a lot is I would put my marks in sort of three, just like the watercolours in the background, if I did it in three separate areas, I'd put 
um, three lots of mics down in the background as well and I find that works well just for balance. Because I didn't have enough going on in this page I now get out some random mic stamps. So this set is from Carabelle Studios and I'm just using the um, archival inks to stamp this down just to add some more texture in the background and again you can stop at any stage. I am very bad at um, stopping early. I like to keep going and keep going and keep going because my mantra is if it really doesn't work in the end I can always paint over it and that's how I get over that. Some people ask me oh you know you're so you know you're so courageous with what you do on your page you just keep going you just keep adding. I get really scared when I do it. It's because I've just got this it doesn't matter if it doesn't look good at the end. If it doesn't look good at the end, I can paint over it. I can do something with it. It can always be rescued. Um, and that's the sort of attitude you need to go into. This is just mic making and having a go and seeing what I like and seeing what I don't like. Um, some mics I get really used to and those I tend to use in lots of pieces. Other mics I'm just trying out and I think, oh, yeah, I don't really like that. I won't do that one again. So it is all just about playing. So now I'm just going in with random colours of Posca paint pens. I am trying to pick up some of the colours I do have in the background or balancing out. So if I've got lots of yellows, I might put a blue in. And you can see how that turquoise is really sort of picking out from the background. Um, the other thing is putting sort of scallops edges along things and highlighting those. One thing I have found is if you're trying to make your work look sketchy, do two or three lines over it because that makes it look deliberate. If you just do one line that's a bit wonky, it sometimes doesn't look deliberate enough. So this chipboard piece is one of the Tim Holtz um, ideology pieces and it comes in quite a thick chipboard and I've just peeled it off to stick it into my journal because it's just a perfect size. I really love the size of it but if it was on the chipboard it would be too thick. So don't be afraid as well to change the supplies that you've got um, and alter them to how they work for you. So this is a close up of the final page. This is really fun to do and it's one when I get um, creatively blocked I tend to do a lot because I really enjoy the process. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see you later.